so last time we were talking about uh, uh, degrees of freedom of um, different systems and in particular we talked about a particle that is constrained to move on a given smooth surface okay let's pursue that example further and let's say that uh, we give the surface okay we, we tell we specify the surface on which the particle is constrained to move and there may be other forces which are acting on it. So it might be getting pulled gravitationally or electromagnetically by some other things, but it always has to live on that surface. Okay, and uh, we'll in investigate this um, in some detail. So let's go to, yes, here. Okay. So, uh, a particle constrained to move on a surface. Okay, and let's say the equation that describes the surface is given by uh, this relation f x y z equals to zero, okay? So th uh, that's the surface, this is one equation. So the particle has, a free particle has three degrees of freedom. And because of this one equation, uh, it will have two because three minus one is two. So you have two degrees of freedom for this uh, system, for this particle, and that's the equation. So let's say in um, some time interval dt, the particle gets displaced by an amount dr, okay? So in some interval dt, it gets displaced by dr, okay? And the displacement has to be on the surface. Now, how are the displacements, dx, dy, and dz, how are they constrained? So they have to be related to each other so that, they, so that the particle stays on, f on the surface, right? So to find that how they are related to each other, we can write phi. So this is telling that whatever that particle does, wherever it goes, its coordinates at every point of time t should satisfy this, okay? Which means if I take a total time derivative of this, that has to be zero. So d phi, let me use the same kind of phi as before, d phi over dt should be zero or, or even, even or simply let's say d phi is zero. Okay, that has to hold true. Now d phi is the following. So you take the par partial derivative of phi with respect to x into dx plus partial derivative of phi with respect to y dy plus del phi over del z into dz, okay? This, this has to be zero. Now this you can write as gradient of phi dot dr, okay? What are the components of dr? dx, dy and dz. These are the components. So that's what your dr is. And gradient and ph gradient of phi, the components are del phi over del x, del phi over del phi, uh, y and del phi over del z. And this entire thing should be equal to zero. Okay, because of this. That's good. Now uh, let's ask, what are the forces that are acting on the particle due to the constraint, due to the surface. So if the particle is constrained on the surface and the surface is smooth, the force on it can only be in the direction normal to the surface. Okay, I hope that's clear. See, the surface is smooth. Uh, there's no, f it's smooth, so there's nothing which can give a force in the horizontal direction or, or let's say in the tangential direction, tangential to the surface. Okay, that cannot happen. That is what you mean by smooth, right? 
if something is not smooth then it it can give you a force which is along the surface okay tangential to the surface if it is smooth it cannot so whatever that force is let's call it f prime okay so f prime force due to the surface okay that's the constraint force that f prime will be proportional to gradient of phi okay because gradient gives the direction normal to the surface and f prime is normal to the surface so there will be some constant k involved proportionality constant involved in here and this will be the relation between the force and the the gradient of phi that's good now from here i can immediately see that this result which we found earlier tells us something about the nature of the force of constraint okay so what we do is we put this thing this equation in here in this one okay and we immediately see that f prime dot dr is equal to 0 okay what's f prime dot dr that's the work done by the force of constraint in moving the particle by amount dr okay and we see that that work turns out to be zero okay so uh, this is one thing we have noticed about um the the force of constraint that's nice note however that the phi here okay didn't involve time explicitly there was no explicit dependence on time in here okay meaning i'm imagining a surface that does not change over time let's relax that condition and say that the 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 surface is changing with time okay you can imagine for example a particle which is sitting on the floor of the lift okay and the lift is going up or down whatever let's say it's going up with some velocity v now this surface on which the particle is lying is not staying put here but it is going up okay so there is a explicit time dependence okay it has to move with velocity v and let's see in that case what happens okay so we go to the next page and here um so i want to put time dependence time dependent constraint and in fact the time dependence is explicit not not implicit okay so here let's say i have a surface which is given by this relation okay so some phi uh, which depends on time as well and let's ask um, can can i say something similar or uh, something similar about the work done which we uh, saw in the last uh, last page i mean why i'm interested in the work done we'll come to that later uh, not, not 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 today in this video uh, but let's for the moment just ask what is the work done by the force of constraint when there is an explicit time dependence okay so as before i just write down d phi so let's say again in time dt my particle moves or gets displaced by amount dr okay then d phi would be del phi over del x dx plus del phi over del y dy plus del phi over del z dz plus now there is time dependence as well del phi over del t dt this was not this term was not there earlier okay this as before is gradient of phi dot dr plus delta phi over delta t into dt and which will be zero okay d phi is zero because the particle is constrained on that surface 
from from this i can write down um gradient of gradient of phi dot dr equals minus del phi over del t into dt now in this case also the force will be normal to the surface which means it will be proportional to gradient of phi okay so imagine your lift lift is going upwards the particle is constrained to move on on the surface it's going somewhere okay it's getting displaced with time but whatever happens the forces are always perpendicular to the surface okay so again my f prime would be proportional to the gradient of phi um, some some k times gradient of phi if i substitute this in here in this relation i get f prime dot dr equals so i have um, gradient phi to be f prime over k so there is a k in this uh, denominator which i take to the other side and it becomes minus k del phi over del t dt let's see if it is okay it is f prime over k is gradient phi that's correct so now in in the present case this is the work done so when particle goes from wherever it was to the other location in time uh, interval dt okay that's the displacement dr the work done by the force uh, is not zero okay it's a non zero force because there is a non zero right hand side okay which is uh, not surprising if you if you think of this example of the lift when the lift floor is going up okay that particle is going upwards so some work is being done because of the force of constraint okay now there is something uh, you can see for some reason which will come to you later for some reason i am interested in getting the work done to be zero i am interested in those forces where the work done will be zero but clearly this is not the case here but notice if i start looking at not the actual displacements which happen over uh, time interval dt okay so this is let me be more clear this is the actual displacement okay now i want to imagine another kind of displacement i want to be in, uh, i want to uh, look at a displacement that happens okay let me put it differently okay Im imagine a displacement at a fixed time so you have to imagine a particular time and on that time itself you have to imagine a displacement so let me write down so i am thinking of a virtual displacement because all re actual real displacements will happen in time okay but now i'm interested in something which happens at the same time so i'm talking about a virtual displacement i will denote it by delta r to distinguish it from dr okay and that uh, virtual displacements dr happens at a given instant now if you are hearing this for the first time this might be very confusing because i'm asking you to imagine a displacement which happens at a given instant but the moment you start imagining it your brain will trick you and um, no because it knows all the displacements happen in time you will always start thinking something changing bit time so if that is happening to you don't worry you don't have to imagine it really all you have to do is think mathematically put the time interval dt to be zero because i am saying that displacement virtual displacement has to happen at the same time okay and denote the displacement by uh, sorry delta r okay so imagine your lift is here at time t and what are the displacements that can happen at that time it can happen on the surface of the lift right but any real displacement 
will not happen uh, on the surface or with the same z, um, same value of z, right? Because in any finite interval of time or even infinitesimal interval of time, this particle will have some uh, displacement along the z direction as well, right? That's, that will be the case for the real displacement. But I'm talking about the virtual one and the displacement will be on the surface. So the real displacement and the virtual displacements are very different, okay? But uh, don't worry about uh, imagining it. Just put dt d to zero and think of a displacement which is allowed at that time, okay? So that's what we are talking about. Now, this relation then becomes f prime dot delta r equals zero, okay? Okay, I should not have cut it. That's the relation. So this says that under the virtual displacement, F prime does zero work, okay? Now it's clear that not all forces will uh, give you zero virtual work. So let's call this work as virtual work. N not everything will give you uh, zero virtual work. If your surface was not smooth, if it had friction, then whatever displacement you imagine from here to there, even at a give, uh, given at uh, given at one instant, because of the friction, there will be a horizontal component, right, to f prime, and you will get a non-zero work in going from here to there. Okay, so not all forces will give you zero virtual work, but what we are interested in is the is the force which will give us zero virtual work. Okay, let's see what else I wanted to say in this one. Okay. So what we have, just to summarize, we can divide the Divide the forces of constraints into two uh, two varieties. One which do zero virtual work, and another which do some virtual work. Okay. Very good. So right now it's not clear why I'm talking about those things and why should that be important. But as you'll see, this will be uh, very useful and we'll uh, try to get equations of motion using uh, the concept of virtual work, okay? And as I mentioned, um, friction is out if you want the virtual work to be zero. And now onwards, we would be only interested in those kinds of constraints which give the virtual work to be zero, okay? So in this course, we will not have um, those um, those constant forces for which virtual work is not zero. So we'll talk more about uh, such things in the next video. See you then.